reactions. Stimulus 7 should yield only reaction 23. But it was all too much for his teenage friend. He became psychotic and he was uh, hospitalised in a mental institution. I think for three months or six months or something. He, he lost a whole year. And later, when I finally get to ask Sam how he felt about what he'd done, I'm certain something is missing in his brain. Or maybe in his soul. Do you think that what you did was wrong? Well, yes, I think that what I did was wrong, simply because wrong is well defined in the Oxford English Dictionary. So I can't give you a counterfactual answer. As a matter of fact, it was wrong. Do I feel that it was wrong? In other words, do I feel guilt or remorse or anything? No, 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 whatsoever. Again and again, I'm left wondering if Sam's story can really be true. But our research says it probably is. Makes me wonder if there's a test we can do for evil. It's the last scheduled stop on our adventure. Today we've organised a special visit to a unique collection of psychopathic brains. It's called the Vought Archive, hidden away in the basement of a local university. Over a thousand criminal brains, sliced, diced and sandwiched between class. Sam would have loved this. It's the work of an enterprising scientific couple, Cecily and Oscar Vought, pioneers in humankind's search for the moral brain. The Vaughts went out of their way to access the brains of heinous criminals and the so-called morally insane. An incredible term, by the way, that people could be insane because they have no uh, conscience. You see that not only pseudoscientists or meds professors uh, were doing that kind of work, uh, but also a very renowned uh, neurologist as uh, Vogt, uh, as Flechtig, uh, had their ideas about uh, where could morality be localized in the brain. Who knows, but in the future, these digital brain scans of Sam could be of similar interest to scientists. Current thinking still has it that treating psychopaths makes them worse, and punishment has no effect. Researchers, though, are beginning to understand the overlap between the moral parts of the brain and the parts which might indicate psychopathy. And this could be the key to unlocking the puzzle of how to deal with them. First of all, we hope to find what you can call a neuro test for measuring morality. So it could be uh, very interesting to know uh, uh, about a growing child who has some behavior problems, some, some conduct disorder, uh, to know what his level of morality is. Uh, our hope is that uh, uh, by knowing more about their brains, we found something uh, that could be stimulating enough uh, uh, for the uh, scientific community to help the, the, these people. Uh. I was keen to hear what Sam thought about all this. But the day had started badly. I'd grown weary of Sam's off-camera tirades against me. They were now getting more frequent and more vicious. This time, I was determined his behaviour wouldn't go unrecorded. Would you prefer not to come today, Sam? Sheet face. Sorry? Sheet face. Pick your nose and lick your fingertips. Do something you're good at. You got that? I don't, I don't, want to, I don't really want to work. Um, don't work. Okay. Don't work. I don't want to work like this. I don't, I don't want to work like this. That's the only way. What can you do? That's what I think about you. You're fucking in your shit face. Now, take all this into consideration. What do you want to do? Um, you are on the catch 22. What to do here? Slide. Breach the contract. And I'll be delighted. I buy my own tickets, baby. No, I, 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 Sam, I'm not rich. interested in fighting with you about money. I'm not interested in your shit face. Money. I'm not interested in your shit face. I'm really not interested in... You're the most narcissistic person I've seen. You're the voice of a croaking frog and you fancy yourself a singer. You're an idiot. So here we are. Do you want to go or not? Well, I'm... Pick your nose. You forgot to pick your nose. And don't forget to lick your fingertips. Revolting thing. I know you're trying to punish me, but I'm, I'm not really sure. Yeah, I'm not trying to punish you. You're so inconsequential. 
I'm trying to manipulate you into doing the movie that I want you to do. Well, okay. So. Good luck. Well, if, if you want to take this cab, I'm happy to, to um, give you the day off. And well, I don't guess I could promise get you to promise that you wouldn't. You'll stop abusing me because because I do not like being bullied. We all we all don't like certain things in life, but life is life, you know. Certain things are unchangeable. I don't like conflict, Sam. But um, you know, well, you it seem seems like be, you seem to be courting it left, right, center. <laughs> Victims of psychopaths are generally left confused and broken after their encounter. Most of the psychopaths will actually have the victims ended up by thinking that they're the problem. And uh, one can bully, manipulate and con them. And rather than responding by either leaving or fighting back, they often will take it and think that he's right. You know, everything he says is right, there's something wrong with me and I deserve all of this. And it's pretty sad. Something called projection is common. It's a little like the tactics of a religious cult leader. Characteristic of the paranoid is projecting, which means attributing to others one's own nefarious, malicious motives. And that's what you do. You're the one who's hostile. You're the one who did something dishonest. You are not careful with your clothes, etc., etc., etc. It is a perfect representation of what occurs in many religious groups in which the leaders, in a sense, understanding of your deficiencies absolves you of your sins, so to speak. And that's part of his strategy. The victims all have something in common, and that is that they're human. And everybody can be victimized. I have been victimized. I have been conned and manipulated by psychopaths, and I should know better, but how do you know? I love you. If we believe in the fundamental goodness of man, we're doomed. Maybe I'm a slow learner, but even after all this time with Sam, I'm still astounded by his capacity for cold-hearted cruelty. Only minutes after his onslaught against me in the hotel lobby, he can calmly slip into the third person and dissect the whole incident, giving us some useful tips on bullying at the same time. Your body was flooded instantly with adrenaline and its derivatives like norepinephrine and so on. Now when, when these hormones pervade the bloodstream, your brain reacts. It shuts down certain centers and activates others. This is called a stress reaction or stress syndrome actually. Then when the abuse recedes, the uh, adrenaline levels begin to drop. As they drop, the entire system goes into mayhem. The heart that receives an adrenaline shock and, and pounded about 30 to 50 percent faster has to readjust. Blood pressure drops precipitously and you move from hypertension to hypotension. Many systems in the, in the body go haywire. Uh, within a session of bullying and, and especially after the session is over. So what bullies usually do, they start and stop, start and stop. That achieves the maximum physiological arousal and, and the maximal stress syndrome. And this is the great secret of bullying. Never overdo it. Small doses. The victim will do the rest. Although you are shaking much less, I must do something about it. As for me, I'm feeling quite shattered. Even though I've captured what I think is the real Sam on camera, I'm not sure I can properly explain the effect he's had on me. Happily, I give Sam the day off. It's a hasty and cheerless farewell. Early the next morning, Sam and Lydia will leave to return to Skopje. The way I feel right now, I'll be happy never to see them again. That night, I hang up my hat and shave my beard, a kind of cleansing ritual. I'm thankful at last for some time free of torment. <laughs> <laughs> 